platform down here and the roughly oval circle is on that so they had a particular reason for planting the stone circle at that exact point. Just visible is the island of Skye. Um, these are the McLeod's tables near Dunvegan, which I knew well having dug an Iron Age site near them a few years earlier. And what's not visible on here, because it's already disappeared, but was visible when I first arrived, was a conical peak even further away than McLeod's tables. And I worked it out eventually that it was one of the Cullins on the sky. And this is a diagram. Uh, I for, never, never managed to obtain uh, a photograph on a clear day. But there is, it's called Glamaig, uh, and it marks the sunrise on the quarter days uh, immediately before and after midwinter, November the 1st and um, February the 1st long way off, something like well over 50 miles, so a very precise alignment indeed. Moreover, the plan of the stone circle made by Alexander Tom shows it has a circular half there and a, probably an elliptical half there. The axis of symmetry is about like that, pretty well pointing to Glamaig. So I wonder what the odds are about uh, finding a long alignment like that just by chance because you saw um, a, a sign, uh, a footpath directing you to it. And the other interesting point about this is that uh, no one's, both Ruggles and Tom surveyed this site. Glamaig was invisible because of the weather. And you realise that um, for these sites you really ought to be exam examining them in really fine weather or at least make a note of how far the horizon was, because there may be others which have not been spotted because of the present rather damper and mistier climate than that which we had in, in the Neolithic times, which was warmer and drier. So that was a, a, what I call a chance test, uh, uh, quite exciting to do. Um, I think perhaps I'll skip over these two because um, I think otherwise I'll be short of time. Uh, that was just about, I'm talking about geometry now and um, wondering whether there's any tests one can do um, for Tom's idea that systematic geometrical shapes underlie the stone circles. Well, this was an accidental test. I had no idea um, before um, going to this stone circle on the island of Isla in Argyllshire I had no idea that it would be possible to do a test of its geometry. If we look first at the right-hand plan, the circle, of course, is called Kaltun. Uh, this is a plan before excavation started. You can see that it, the circle, or the oval, if you like, is on a shallow hilltop, very shallow but distinct. Um, the the best-fitting ellipse is a pretty rotten fit, really. Uh, it passes through one that a couple of standing stones are still there, so it passes through those two naturally, third one there. But the rest are all fallen, lying around, um, and some of these are well away from the ellipse, and uh, it's not a very satisfactory fit at all. So I didn't have much hope of um, finding um, anything relevant to Tom's ideas. However, uh, it soon became clear during the dig that a mass of peat had grown on the site since, um, since Neolithic times. This coincides with the, the deteriorating climate, colder and wetter, round about the end of the second millennium BC. Peat, there was no peat in Neolithic times on this site. A, that's the, the old ground surface there, covered in stones and pebbles. But what was really interesting, once the peat started to come off, it quickly became clear that the stones were not, it was not a wrecked stone circle, but an unfinished one. Three stones had been put in, upright, that one and that one and that one. The rest had, had been dragged up to, close to, or fairly close to, sockets which had been dug in the subsoil. And there's one of the sockets there. It looks black because the later peat 
had filled in a depression. The, the sockets had never held stones, they gradually silted up with uh, uh, soil over the centuries. And as you can see, that huge slab there is not in a position to have fallen out of the socket. It hasn't even, uh, if it fell out, the butt would be still over the socket. And that one isn't even close to a stone hole there. So what we have here is a, an unfinished stone circle and removing the peat gave us about 14 stone sockets which ought to be the original shape which was planned for the circle. So there was a chance of finding something interesting from that. And I still remember this thing, this episode, because uh, the colleague in the University of Glasgow in the physics department, Ian Crawford, who was interested, and he had a computer program to test stone circle plans for ellipses. So I sent him the data, angle and distance measurements of all the, the three standing stones and all the sockets. And he sent me back his calculations, particularly he sent me the coordinates of the two foci of the ellipse. And so I was stuck in hazy weather. I stuck two ranging poles in where they should be on the ground and um, waited for the weather to clear. Unfortunately, this slide is still not really clear enough. I'm hoping to enlarge it here. It might be a bit ob more obvious. You can maybe just see a mountain peak there and a smaller one there. And in fact, that is in County Donegal in Ireland, Sleeve Snacht. And the uh, diagram shows that the long axis of the ellipse points more or less exactly at this peak, which is the midsummer sunset position sometime in the third millennium BC. So a very long and very accurate alignment indeed, and, and indicated by the geometry of the circle. Of the, of the ellipse. Well, that came about, as I said, purely by accident because uh, you could not detect any of this before excavation took place. <coughs> but there's something else interesting about this and that is the, the shape of the ellipse itself, the best fitting ellipse. As you see, these are the stone sockets, the white bits here, and the three standing stones there. And the calculated ellipse fits them extremely well. It's not just any old ellipse. It's, um, it turns out to be very close to one with an eccentricity of one half, which means that the two foci there and there, uh, which I'll explain in a moment, are half the distance between them is half the distance of the long axis. That gives that very, very characteristic shape. So I sketched this a few days ago, as you can see, handwritten numbers and so on. To remind those of you who didn't do geometry at school, which I did a long time ago, that um, how you lay out an ellipse, probably most of you know this, but I'll say it anyway. How you lay out an ellipse in the field is planting your pegs at the two foci there. Uh, the further apart they are, the flatter the ellipse is. The closer together, the more rounder it is. When they come together in the middle, of course, it's a true circle. Um, it's quite easy to draw out an, an ellipse with an eccentricity of a half. You lay out your long axis, let's say a unit of 50, there, and it is in fact almost exactly 50 megalithic yards, which is interesting. Um, the, Long axis is then divided into half and then into quarters. So you've got your two pegs there, uh, 25 units apart. And this blue line represents the loop of rope, which you then draw tight round the pegs and inscribe.